But the next one here, he talks about no guile. 1 Peter 2 verse 22, he did no sin, neither was what? Guile found in his what? Mouth. By the way, Peter begins the chapter in chapter number 2 verse 1 and encourages Christians to lay aside guile. That proves to us that we can have guile in our hearts and mouths. And he doesn't want the Christians to have that characteristic, that evil characteristic in our lives. So he says, lay aside malice, hypocrisies, guile, evil speaking. But specifically, he makes mention that Christ had no guile. What's guile? No deceit. He had no deceit in his heart. Uh, he had no, you know, uh, uh, he wasn't like a two-faced he wasn't double-tongued. Uh, he, 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 wasn't ha he had, didn't have... He wasn't there to bait people or trick people. If anything, that was the Pharisees. The Pharisees were always baiting people. The Pharisees always wanted to see Jesus fall and fail. They tried to trick him many a times. But Jesus didn't have that in there. What you see in Jesus is what you get. I mean, his testimony was very out there. People knew that he wasn't a man of partiality. People knew is what you saw is what you get. Sure. Uh, it was, he was pure. In the eyes of people, there was nothing hidden. Listen, he had no hidden agenda. And the way he reached people and the way he confronted people and the way he was firm with people was there. You could see it. There was no hiding, no hidden you know, deceit and guile in his mouth. No, not for a second. This only indicates to us that we should follow after this and not be crafty or sneaky in the way we deal with people. Because we can. And it's sad. It's very sad to see people trying to trap you, trying to trick you, trying to catch you, trying to see you fall and fail. I think it's one of the saddest things that you can ever have in Christendom. That people try to set you up for a fall. But if ever someone tries to do that, don't learn their ways. Don't react. Don't, you know, tit for tat. Listen, tit for tat never got anyone anywhere. You know, you're just being like them. And what you hate in them is the very thing that you do. But Jesus never did that. They tried to trap him. They tried to trick him. He spoke with wisdom. He exposed them and they didn't like it. I oh, thank God for a, a, a saviour that had wisdom that we can walk after. The Lord's testimony was on display for all to see. And we thank God for that. Now, if anything, this you know, ill intent that Jesus didn't have, the enemies have, and Satan had. Satan has this. That's why Jesus said to, uh, to Simon, he says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan had the desire to have you, that he may what? Sift you like what? Wait. Jesus doesn't have this. The devil has this. The devil wants to see you fail and fall, but Jesus doesn't. We don't want to see our enemies fail and fall. We don't want to see those that are opposing our ministry or the word of God fail and fall. We are actually want to see him recover. That's why we're in the ministry. We, we, we want to see people restored. We want to see people saved. On the contrary. But you can easily fall in the trap by learning the ways of the wicked and trying to be deceitful like your enemy. And I, I, I'm going to encourage you here today, lay it aside. Yeah, but it's suffering. He hurt me. They hurt me. It doesn't matter. And we're going to see later on the fifth characteristic that we saw in Christ. This is the second one. We need to lay it aside. We ought not to exhibit this in our life in any way, shape or form. You know, Jesus didn't try to provoke people to see the worst in them. Do you want me to say that again? Jesus didn't try to provoke people to see the worst in them. You know, people can provoke you so you can just, they're trapping you. He didn't do that. He wasn't sly. No. He encouraged them. He encouraged Peter. Although Peter put his foot in his mouth many a times, he did not provoke him. He tried to help him. And I'm afraid we see guile, trickery, deceit in the heart of people. And I'm saying to you, don't catch it. Amen. Have nothing to do with it. Lay it aside. Be truth. Be firm. 
and some people won't like it. But that's what you need to be. It doesn't matter if they don't like the, the truth in you and it's coming out. At least it's coming out and they know who you are. Yeah. It's a shame to see people having a double tongue, double heart, isn't it? Yeah. May God help us Amen. that we're not like that. That we're forthright. What we can say in this room to one another, we can say to another person that we're talking about. Because we love them and we have concerns about them. Absolutely. And the Bible's an open book. I mean, I read the accounts of men and women. I mean, you know, can you imagine that we were in that era and God wrote about us? What would he write about us? And for you to have your daily devotion and read about what he wrote about other people. I mean, wow, do we see? Yeah, because we're open books. Our, li our life should be on display. Hey, we've got nothing to hide. The righteous are bold as a lion. The wicked flee when no man pursueth. But the righteous are bold as a lion. They've got nothing to hide. There's no guile. There's no cheating, trickery. Hey, their life is on display. No guile in suffering. Don't have deceit in your heart. The Paul the Apostle writes to the Thessalonians... And he said to them, he said, our exhortation was not in deceit, nor of uncleanness, nor in guile. Do you know why? I'll tell you why. He says this, but as we were allowed of God to be put in trust with the gospel, even so we speak, not as pleasing to men, but God, look at this, which trieth the hearts. Because they had a fear of God that kept them sober. May God give us that. Amen. The Bible says in Psalm 32 verse 2, Blessed is the man unto whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, and in whose spirit there is no guile. Our Lord Jesus Christ can testify about Nathaniel's life when he first met him. Ironically, Jesus saw Nathaniel come unto him and he said, Behold, a Israelite indeed in whom there is no guile. Now, He's not saying that Nathaniel was sinless. But this, there was a quality that in his life that he commended. In other words, Nathaniel wasn't susceptible to this wicked character trait. And Jesus recognized it. Brethren, if you have this character trait, it will cripple your Christian life to no end. Get rid of it. It will stunt your growth. It will stunt your ministry. I tell you something, it will even stunt your walk with God. Yep. Get rid of it. Don't have it. Be pure in heart. And Jesus says, behold, the Israelite indeed, there is no guile. Jesus takes it very serious. Now, I believe that this indicates to us when he said this, that there's a point of genuineness in Nathaniel. Sincere. That's right. He is sincere. And may God help up every single one of us to be sincere Amen. in our ministry, Amen. even when we suffer. Amen? Number three, 1 Peter 2, 23. Who, when he was reviled, reviled not again. Now that word revile means to cast insults or to heap abuse, to scorn. And so when Jesus was on that cross, the people that passed by, the Bible says, reviled him. They insulted him and mocked him and scorned him and, and hurled insults at him. Well, did Jesus retaliate? No. And so we ought not to retaliate. We ought not to uh, simply uh, revile back or cast insults back at other people. The Pharisees reviled the, uh, reviled the blind man and his response was very sharp and sweet. We don't have time to go there. But you see, in John chapter 9, we looked, we looked at that account this morning, but his response to the Pharisees was short, sweet, and sharp. They mocked him, they insulted him, and he just responds in very tr sweet words, which are true, which caused them to kick him out of their presence. They didn't want to hear it. So what, what do we learn from this? Truth always prevails. Uh, n nowhere in Scripture... Does it say that we cannot stand for truth? As a matter of fact, when Jesus stood before Pilate and he was on trial, he still answered Pilate with truth. Though he was buffeted 
and what and, and all you know suffering and going to the cross he never ever you know came to the point where he would not speak truth but you would never hear any abuse and this is what revolves abusing people this is what we were charged with remember when we went out to uh, pass out tracks at that uh, gay parade they actually accused us of going and calling people faggots and all this and that will you know insult we, this is not what Christianity is about we don't do this we don't go picket and protest no we go preach Amen. so picketing and protest and abusing people or whatever is not right that's not Christianity we, ought, we don't do that and if people do that in the name of Christ they give Christianity a bad name what can we do and this is what we see today Peter makes it very clear that Jesus Christ never abused people back. They mocked him. Was he firm with them? Yeah. Well, you Pharisees. You hypocrites. He was as truthful. Nothing wrong with being firm and truthful. Let's just not get, you know, really mixed up here today. Amen? But he did not in any way insult people, undermine people, verbally abuse people. That wasn't in Christ, and that ought not to be in us. Amen? The Apostle Paul says this.